Um, David Hawke. Good evening. <laughs> okay, kia ora. Thanks for taking the time to listen to us today. So uh, beside me is John Bennett, who's chair of Halsall Residents Association, and I'm the secretary. So there are two themes that we want to bring to you today. One's a sort of glass half empty theme, and the other is a glass half full theme. So we'll start first with the uh, glass half empty, which is the question of the long-term plan consultation process. Last year in our annual plan submission, we said that uh, City Council needs to develop a strategy for encouraging all demographics in our community. We're just bearing that in mind, we're going to focus on our experience this time round uh, in obtaining more detail on three particular projects in the long-term plan. Uh, they're numbered out in our written submission, but um, Cart Club Relocation, Quarrymans Trail Connections, and Wigram Hayton. So if we pick up the Wigram Hayton one first, with the help of Andre Moore, a community board member, we got a quick response from the engagement team and from staff, which was great. Cart Club relocation, on the other hand, requires a very deep breath. We emailed Councillor Galloway on the 8th of March, and she promptly forwarded the questions that we had to the Chief Executive's office. And after that, silence. So 8th of March is nearly two months ago. Until we raised the issue with Councillor Galloway again this morning, she quickly got a reply, and apparently the project that we're talking about shouldn't have even been in the long-term plan. Quarrymans Trail Cycle Connections, we emailed pretty much as soon as the consultation opened. Questions immediately acknowledged by your engagement team, but after that, silence. Then on Saturday, which is some time after the uh, consultation closed, we got an email with some plans, except the plans were for the cycleway itself, which is built and in use, not the project that is in the long-term plan. Interacting with the staff and your engagement team has been really, really positive. We, put, we think they put their hearts into their jobs. The problem we see, if we bring this across the three projects I've talked about, is that these staff are not being resourced properly, which in turn says that, as a council, you're not taking consultation seriously. And we suspect from the issue with the CART Club project um, and other areas that have come into the long-term plan that the resourcing of the long-term plan preparation hasn't been done adequately either. I would have to say, we spend a lot of time in putting together our submissions, and all this mucking around, we think that as a council, you're taking a rather cavalier approach to people like us and our committee, who put a lot of work in on behalf of our communities. But I thought we'll put the happy side now, which is your strengthening communities team and its funding. The projects that we run as an association, the ANZAC commemoration is the most visible. They have a seamless and enthusiastic backing of your staff on your behalf. We're currently working on a heritage project, again with the strong and enthusiastic backing of your staff on your behalf. The projects that I've just mentioned and other ones that we're involved in could not easily be done by City Council itself, so we're really happy that you have come alongside us for these projects. So thanks for listening. Kia ora. I'm just going to allow a little bit of leeway in terms of time here as well, because uh, your submission was one of the ones that I read and specifically not by name mentioned in my star column where I talked about people who'd raised the fact that they had to rely on institutional knowledge for the memory of things that had come and gone, and um, it, it, it isn't good enough, and it is something that we are... Um, working with staff on to make sure that we've got a better way of um, communicating with particular, particularly in the residential areas where the, um, their knowledge about the background to all of these projects is so great. So I love the fact that you ended on that, on that um, positive note about working in partnership. Tim. Hey, uh, thank you very much for your um, submission. Just with regards to point E with um, the PT for Lincoln Road. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, I know you'll be aware. We've been very sensitive about that going through Addington because you see what Brougham Street's done to 
Waltham and those wonderful old suburbs. So we'd just be, we're just taking a time to be sensitive to the Eddington community. Mm -hmm. There's no question we're all in, on the same boat with us and PT and cycle lanes, but we do have to be, be respectful for those older um, communities that's going to go through. And with regards to uh, Wakata Kotahi, <coughs> with regards to Horsell Road, one of the issues that has come up and concerns with the local community is Rowley Ave being identified by many as a rat run and it's got a, a, a school, it's a low decile area, so we really want to just be careful and sensitive about that. So it, it's, we're all on the same boat, but we just want to be, and, I'm sh and you have been very respectful of those communities, so just, but we haven't, we're not going slow, we're just being respectful, and thank you. All right, yeah. Cheers. Between you and me, <laughs> and everyone who's on the screen. other end of the live stream and anyone who's over, this, over here we went to the transport agency drop in on the state highway 75 consultation mm -hmm. and we asked them oh, you know, how much have you been talking to city council and they said oh what <laughs> yeah, no, and, we... and, and I guess I'm not sure whether it's in our submission but what we see is agencies not talking to each other No, that, that we have been, they've come to our community board we had a really good session with them and um, Carolyn um, Potter was there, and you can imagine if they'd done anything wrong, she would have ripped them apart. So, yeah. so it's, it's surprising they should said that because we have been in contact yeah, with them. Yeah, because we were in touch with them about yeah. the um, need to look at the speed limits um, yeah. past Little River. So, um, yeah, so yeah. Um, okay. it's interesting. Yeah. But yeah, maybe, well, maybe the people yeah. at, at undertaking the engagement yeah. hadn't been engaged right. with our. But it, you know, I agree with you that it's perhaps an example of where a more collaborative engagement process would have been more sensible to um, to, to develop. But I do want to acknowledge your sensitivity towards those other communities. It's yeah. always been first rate. So thank you very much for that, guys. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, Sarah. Thanks so much. And I remember the submission from last year on on engagement stuff. Um, how would you, apart from the, the actual resourcing itself to do things um, and the finding out extra information, how would you suggest that we do things differently to capture those demographic groups and those kind of things um, next time round or in other consultations we do? Mm. Yeah, it's a real challenge because if you think of the situation, I think you've got about 2,500 submissions, is that right? On yeah, the though, though, though but, quite a few of the group ones represent from 20 to 100 people. Okay. So, yeah. but, it, but if you multiplied you know, an effective consultation, you might have had, instead of 2,500, you might have had 25,000. Yeah. And how would, you, how would the current system cope with, instead of 400 people wanting to talk to you, 4,000 people wanting to talk to you? And, and one of the things is, a, you know, there's a lot of discussion around the world about a more deliberative approach. Yeah. And if you think of the way, for example, like lots of people bring this up, but the the approach that the share an idea system used, which was more at a sort of community level, bringing things together, and that sort of acted as a distillation that then went up to higher levels. And the, one of the, I can't remember his name, but one of your previous submitters talked about participatory um, budgeting. Mm, fin, fin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and that potentially is part of that. Mm. It's, it's really interesting that international literature says that you've got to be really careful about that sort of thing. Because if you you know you pick your um, topic and all you end up with is fist fights, mm. and um, so so you know, but to, it it costs a lot more time and money, but that sort of more ground level participatory sort of approach might be one way forward. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think that the, the linking the community boards and their residents associations into more of a workshop format would actually work quite well if we had. But to resource that, which would be because you know um, there are some submissions have come in on on particular subjects. As soon as we've given additional time to the lead on the subject area, the individual submissions have dropped away because they know that the the issues are going to get canvassed in a more expansive way than they would do by a three minute series of slots all saying the same thing. So. Yeah, yeah. I guess one of the, like this is sort of uh, just sort of shooting myself in the foot a wee bit, but as a residents association, we can't claim that we represent the entire demographics no. of Horsfall. And, and community boards really struggle to reach out into the yeah. community. So, you know, there's quite a bit of work to go in that Well, space. let's do some thinking about how we might make that happen. And we can do it outside of the LTP process mm -hmm. as a lead up to an LTP process, I mm -hmm. think. 
Um, but anyway, thank you very much for your um, extensive work that you've put into your submission and providing me with some fodder for my star column. So <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks <laughs> for listening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Priscilla's not here yet. So